I just took a shower, so my hair might be kinda of shiny. Nah, 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 nah. So today's drawing is coral, cause you know we're doing Inktober, and I'm a little bit behind because I've been working. So sadly, uh, sadly to tell you guys, you know I work out, uh, and because of that, I'm gonna be a lot behind on a lot of things. Uh, hopefully not too behind. Maybe I'll just post less. But I'll still be trying to finish off this ink tour even if I don't finish it on time. I'll finish it as much as possible. Um, so I made this rough uh, kind of like using this smush kind of tool is that and then you just like blend it out. Uh, I made this little scene for uh, for the theme coral and you know it's not really finalized. I did this smush tool because it gives it, it, it makes it all blurry which is kind of good because you know we're in the water it's not supposed to be very clear uh, and everything so I can always take this and then make it slightly darker than usual and then you know brighten up some areas not uh, not all areas maybe I'll take a white uh, uh, I'll take that and then select a white color uh, not white color uh, my shade and then just pass it really roughly over some of it. Now that little amount of white can potentially when I make it darker it gives it like depth uh, to the entire environment. It's kind of like if you're looking it up and everything is just surrounding you. I'm trying to have like some sort of fish here and uh, I'm just gonna do like a very rough looking fish. Uh, let me grab another brush. Uh, I think I was using that one. I'm gonna use this one. Oh, this one. Yeah, I'll use this one to do like the very rough drawing of the fish at a separate layer. Uh, Uh, like if the fish is right here or maybe it's just like turning in that sort of direction uh, so I don't really draw a lot of fishes so I'm not sure how to do them I'm just doing the basic shape of one I think and yeah and we have like another one over here and a bunch of fishes all throughout here, just surrounding this area. Maybe have an odd fish somewhere here. Uh, it's just to get a very rough idea of what I want uh, uh, on the sketch uh, on this one entire shape. But now I'm gonna be doing the Inktober uh, portion where I take 15 minutes to do as much detail as possible. Uh, maybe I'll draw the fi uh, all the fishes in 15 minutes. I'll take this fish example that I uh, that I have right here uh, as a way to understand uh, how fish should look. So at least that specific fish and then I'll just draw that sort of fish all throughout and then over here it's just little colors uh, maybe the fish is the only thing with color or maybe the coral is the only thing with color uh, but it's supposed to be inktober maybe it's not supposed to have color so let's just get started 15 minutes on the clock because it's supposed to be a 15 minute sketch of the day and boom uh, Clock started. Uh, add a new layer. Maybe I'll turn out the opacity on uh, on the fishes. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. I'll take my uh, my brush. This one. Uh, no, 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 no. I'll take this. Oh, uh, uh, that one. Look. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'll make it slightly lighter and not too gray, not too uh, not too dark gray. Uh, I think it should be darker. Either that or lighter. 
I'm in the wrong letter, that's fine. Figuring out the shape. It'll be good if I knew how uh, how to draw a lot of fishes, but I don't. So this is my first official fish illustration. I to draw him. It's been kind of like tricks out. this one hot fish. I'm gonna put on my headset because yes, uh, last time that I did a drawing, it uh, what happened is that uh, I could, I didn't, uh, I was able to tell that the drawing uh, timer had gone off because I didn't have my headset on. So now I have my headset on, so I can tell whether the timer goes off or not. Now I'm trying to uh, go as rough as possible with this maybe this is where the people will be at. And color it like that. And now this, this is where the fin is at. And color the fin down here. We can't really see the other spin. And oh, hmm. oh, that looks nice. Oh, what else? Oh, it's going down. a little bit of it so it's not too noticeable right now. and yeah I think I like that uh, I'm gonna take that and then add a layer under it and then just color that whole entire layer uh, for vicious color it's gonna be slightly darker than what it than what the lines are Passing it over. I'm not trying to focus so much on the detailing. Normally I do selection coloring, but I notice sometimes that takes a lot longer than just doing like a rough coloring. I don't know why. Unless you're trying to do like a lot of detailing and stuff. And yeah. Which I'm not. I'm not trying to go into a lot of detail. as rough as possible. Uh, this would have been a nice piece for uh, the fish drawing that I was supposed to uh, have done for the first day of Inktober for you guys on YouTube but my first drawing for Inktober was actually posted on Instagram which is on YouTube. Uh, so it might confuse you and you're like wait but this guy didn't do the fish drawing. Uh, well uh, this makes up for it then. Yeah. Okay, color all of that. All the areas that I need to. And then afterwards, what I'm gonna do is do a very quick selection, which is like this. Also select this area. And also select this area. And probably something like this. area uh, this 
open area. I will. And just flip her thing. Okay, and then what I want to plan to do is just go over it with the airbrush. Airbrush is going to come in handy. Or even if you don't use the airbrush, you can even use painterly tools. I think I, I like the idea of using something kind of painterly. Kind of like what I was doing with this. Just go a little bit darker and then just like quickly pass it over some of it. Like that. Oh, not, not a two are messed up. Supposed to block it. The only colors within that area. No, I don't miss. And then deselect it. Sound is selected. And that's the fish. Yeah, now let's get down to the core, uh, core, uh, core roll. Uh, I used to do this technique where, uh, in one of my videos, I think I've shown most of the YouTubers out there, is you take an, a, an image of paper, right? So I'm going to select paper, right? And I'm just going to take this one with grain, and it has like, oh, texture and everything, right? Just throw it in there, right? scale it to whatever size you want right and what i'm essentially doing is you know, i could always just multiply that oh that looks kind of cool nice texture right? um but anyways uh, i'll basically take this and uh, let me hide the background but not too much. I want to have like a good starting point. So a good starting point would be something like this. I'll take this brush, make it dark, maybe put a mark right there, and then I'll hide the background. So what I'm gonna do is draw something that I want, uh, like a little tree coming from that area, right? Uh, which would be good if you could have a bunch uh, like if you're drawing branches doesn't matter if they're accurate or not uh, and then afterwards I hide this right you make sure that everything is connected right connected 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 uh, this needs to be connected so connected to there this connected to that this needs to be all connected okay then afterwards what I would do is like let's say I take all of this rough drawing and everything and I add it to this. So I don't need that. All I need is this one. This layer. And then you use use the paint bucket to do the uh, do this type of uh, filling in. And then what you would do is you would click on, on, on the drawing a bunch of times. And it'll give you like this weird sort of texture. If you keep it up a little bit more, maybe you'll do a little bit more texture. I kind of like it be not too thick. And then 
eventually it'll stop. So essentially it's just keep pressing and seeing where it bleeds to. Kind of like a, a it's kind of like if you're seeing a tree take form. Uh, obviously, you gotta watch out that the, you don't fill in the whole entire canvas. Because that happens sometimes. You know? and, and, and it's like something that you're not really controlling. All you're doing is controlling how many times you tap. And that's it. And it just takes a, a life of its own. So you can even do this sort of effect, like if you're trying to animate some cool uh, texture, uh, like tree getting born. Uh, you can do this sort of thing. Oh, well, this one seems like it's going pretty far into one another. So I'm just gonna keep going, keep going. It, it looks really cool and it takes absolutely no time to just tap a bunch of times. Of course, it's kind of like uh, dotting, uh, that technique where you just like tap a bunch of times. Except this one's digital. Like, even just looking at it at a screen, it kind of looks cool. So it looks like I'm making like little treats. So if, if you have a hard time doing trees uh, because you know you have a hard time doing like leaves and stuff try doing this technique maybe you get the results that you wanted hey you don't you get a variation of little trees all around all right uh, I'm gonna do some line works here line uh, extra lines just notice that that didn't go very far I want that one to like extend a little bit more And do the filling thing again. Seeing whether, uh, whether that takes a life of its own, also. Sometimes it takes uh, a life of its own, sometimes it doesn't. And you can always increase it and seeing if it gives you more results like what you want. Uh, in my case, it didn't. It looks too dark. I like this t that grainy texture. So it's probably in the no. Trying to go back enough times to see that grainy texture again. And I'll call it a day for those. Alright. Let's see, was there any more? No, I think that was it. And then we just put the background back in. Uh, we put the fish drawing. We put the uh, we put the color of the fish uh, back in the rock uh, here. And see, you already have like this coral uh, all around. And what you can always do is take uh, the drawing that you have all the coral, uh, coral that got formed by itself. Uh, did I do it in the wrong layer? Oh no. Where, where's the coral? Here, here. So, you would take this drawing, and then what would uh, what you could potentially do is either soft erase it, or just grab like a brush like this, right? And then just select this, right? Go select it, and then just blend it in with the background, right? Which is essentially what I'm doing. I'm just blending it in the background. The time's up pretty much, so we, uh, we got our coral, uh, and we got our uh, fish. But I'm thinking I'm gonna put like another one down here, just for the sake of like rounding things up. And then like do little uh, white dots all throughout the, uh, the upper area. Uh, 
this sort of light color and it will be very rough, very rough like that. Just making markings so that it kind of gives the illusion of them being fish just here. dark areas you can even take like different brushes and just pass it over some of it maybe you get some cool uh, technique uh, pattern uh, some patches and stuff you might have wanted or maybe you didn't want uh, you know blend some of those in At this point, I'm just going over the background again. And I'm darkening up this bottom portion right here, because it's supposed to be darker. And for the fish, I'm gonna take this one entire thing, duplicate it, and then just, just there lock, and then darken up most of those fish, right? Like that. Bring this above the line of work, which is right here, I think. Yeah. Make sure you like that. And turn on the opacity a little. All right. We got like a fish kind of blending more into the background. Uh, Also adding different sorts of textures here for the background because you know gives it like a variation of things doesn't just make it look kind of like stiff and that's pretty much it that's that's the inktober drawing it, if you did like it you know leave a like uh, another technique that you could do is take the what's it called the little uh, trees that we have done right lock it and then just go over it with like dark colors for the areas that are darker uh, and then take a really bright white and then just pass it over some of it like that you know light hits it too uh, how does that look? that actually does not look <laughs> the light portion I mean. the dark air portion kind of looks nice maybe Soften it up by uh, turning on the opacity so it blends in a little bit to the background. And yeah, that's what I needed. Maybe on the layer lock it and just blend it in. And then I'm just selecting a really uh, average tone color, uh, shade I mean, and blending in some of it. And I'm gonna call it a day. Thank you all for joining me for today's drawing. If you did like it, leave a like. If you disliked it for any reason, like if I took too long and you got bored of it, you know, leave a dislike. Uh, you know, comment down below what you liked, what you disliked, and if you have a recommendation or if you thought that my trick of making coral was very beneficial because you were having a hard time making coral yourself. Uh, of course, this trick it mainly applies to Sketchbook Pro. I'm not sure if other applications work the same way, but from what I understand, Sketchbook Pro does have like this cool feature where it does like this bleeding into other uh, things, uh, like that. 
and you know it comes in handy because you can always vary and uh, vary it out to get cool effects like what I just did. Anyways, I've been me, you've been you, and have a good one. Oh, by the way, uh, before I go, my news uh, video will be above me, and my channel will be right next to me right here, as you can clearly see. Uh -huh.